Okay, first this restaurant was great, and then it was blah, and then it was great again, and now it's, well, you'll see. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. I'm here to talk to you about the Crystal Palace. Did you guess it right? The Crystal Palace is an opening day table service restaurant located at Magic Kingdom. Though this has been a popular choice among guests in the past, some of the more recent changes caused by the restaurant's extended 2020 closure has caused guests' opinion to split. Some enjoy the new take on this restaurant, while others, not so much. Today, we're gonna take a deep dive into the Crystal Palace and figure out whether it's still a top tier must do or if it's been ruined by all its recent reimaginings. Let's get to it. All right, so the Crystal Palace might not be right down the middle of Main Street, USA, but it's definitely still part of that area. You can find this table service restaurant on the outskirts of the Main Street, USA shops. Just make a left at Casey's Corner and start walking like you're walking toward Adventureland. Once you come across a building that resembles a Victorian greenhouse, you'll know you've made it. When Disney World reopened after its extended closure in 2020, the Crystal Palace did not reopen along with it. Instead, the restaurant sat idle until December 2020. Then it reopened much to the excitement of the Crystal Palace fans who worried about its future. The restaurant looked extremely different though. There were no characters and no buffet, meaning a la carte options were brought directly to your table. And we actually loved this change. The food quality was much higher than we expected it to be and it was much higher than it was when the restaurant was a buffet. Some of our DFB reporters and I personally even liked it better than when it was in its OG form. But the restaurant changed again in September 2021 and officially returned to its buffet roots. But why has the Crystal Palace won the hearts of so many over the years? Well, for starters, just look at that prime location. This restaurant has a gorgeous view of Cinderella Castle. And though there's no outdoor seating at Crystal Palace, if you're seated next to one of the restaurant's elongated windows, you'll be able to stare and sigh at that gorgeous, gorgeous castle while you dine. Are you ready for a bit of a history lesson though? The Crystal Palace opened with Magic Kingdom on October 1st, 1971. Originally, it served up cafeteria-style dining, but the layout was changed in 1996. After that change, it officially became a character buffet, which I'm gonna talk about more in a second here. I just wanna make one quick note before we keep moving along. If you wanna eat at Crystal Palace, you're gonna need two reservations. The first reservation is your park pass, which will secure your place in the park after you've purchased your theme park ticket. And the second reservation is for the actual restaurant itself, which you can make on the My Disney Experience app on the Disney website or by calling 407-WDW-DINE. The Crystal Palace isn't nearly as popular as other Magic Kingdom restaurants, such as Be Our Guest and Cinderella's Royal Table, and this table service still fills up fairly quickly, so it's best to secure those advanced dining reservations, or ADRs, 60 days before your trip. All right, let's talk atmosphere of the Crystal Palace. It was originally inspired by England's Crystal Palace, of course, which was erected in Hyde Park to house the Great Exhibition of 1851. Yay, Prince Albert. Now, the restaurant features a lot of greenery, and I mean a lot, along with high ceilings, floor-to-ceiling windows, tons of natural light. So again, it's like dining in a giant greenhouse. It's worth a look around to spot all the little nods to the Winnie the Pooh characters spotted within the topiaries and various other plants. But this restaurant used to do more than just feature Winnie the Pooh and friends through foliage. Before the 2020 closures, it used to be a character dining spot showcasing the 100 acre wood characters, including Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Piglet, and Eeyore. But what were these fuzzy friends doing moseying around the Crystal Palace? Celebrating Friendship Day, of course, and all the characters were thrilled to meet their fellow friends as they wandered from table to table, taking pictures and interacting with guests of all ages. But since it's reopening, the character meet and greet element of this restaurant has not yet returned. And another element that changed after Crystal Palace's reopening is that mandatory face mask. While grabbing food from the buffet, guests must wear a mask. You can only remove your mask once you're at your table and chowing down. Okay, let's get down to the most important part of Crystal Palace. Speaking of chowing down, the food. Literally my favorite topic of conversation 24-7. The Crystal Palace currently serves lunch and dinner, although they used to serve breakfast too. That doesn't mean breakfast won't someday return, but at this time you're better off tracking down breakfast over at Friars Nook Quick Service in Fantasyland or Sleepy Hollow Refreshments in Liberty Square. The buffet features a range of dishes, including carved meats, pasta, shrimp, salads, country fried chicken, carved prime rib, braised beef, short rib, unlimited crab, that's right, crab, and even a loaded tater tot section, yeah. It's the combo you never knew you needed until now. There are lots of safe options for pickier eaters too, like country fried chicken, waltz mashed potatoes, or mac and cheese, but you can also branch out and try dishes like the wood grilled mahi-mahi or roasted wild mushrooms. 
Now, you're probably saying, if you've been to Crystal Palace, AJ, that doesn't sound that bad. Like, sounds like a pretty good buffet. And I agree with you, viewer. That's a much better buffet than they used to have, for sure. But back to the tots and crab, because we got to talk more about those. The Unlimited Tater Tot Station is where you can build the potato plate of your dreams. You'll find toppings like cheese, bacon bits, sour cream, lettuce, and sauces, aka everything you need to create the perfect DIY tachos. And then there's the Unlimited Crab Station. Now, this is totally new. You can grab as many little bowls of shrimp and crab claws as you want here, but you'll have to ask your server for a claw cracker if you want to crack open that crab. Is that what those are called? Claw crackers? Sounds right to me. The prime rib is another popular buffet item. When you ask for a slice, a Crystal Palace chef will carve it right then and there so you know it's fresh. You can also get red wine au jus and a horseradish sauce for something extra to dip the meat into. And there are lots of dessert options too. We got apple cobbler, butterscotch pudding, strawberry shortcake, and cookies and soft serve ice cream so you can make your very own cookie soft serve ice cream sandwiches. But all in all, Crystal Palace is still a buffet with standard buffet options. If you've ever been to a buffet before, then you'll already be pretty familiar with the layout. You find basic food as well as a few unique dishes mixed in for more adventurous eaters. And that's one thing buffets are good at, catering to a lot of different palates. And it's also all you care to eat for one price. So that can be really, really great, or it can be a waste of your money. Speaking of, what's the damage here? Lunch and dinner are both priced at $39 per adult and $23 per child. Now, if you and your travel party are really gonna take advantage of that unlimited crab smorgasbord, and you're also planning on eating several plates full of food to really fuel you up for the day, then you're more than likely gonna eat your money's worth here. But if you're not planning on eating a ton of food before jumping back into the parks on a hot Orlando afternoon, then this price tag might still be on the steeper side of the equation, especially with the missing character meet and greet element. But do not be fooled, characters make the price go up. So for an all you care to eat meal in Disney World, $39 isn't really that bad. Do we dare say that? Yeah, okay, we'll say that. But no added characters, mm, it's difficult. All right, so should you go, the moment of truth, should you go to the Crystal Palace on your upcoming Magic Kingdom vacation? Let's break it down. You should go if you're looking for a safe choice. If you're in a big group with lots of diverse tastes or you have picky eaters, this buffet will satisfy everyone. If you want an extra filling meal, because the Crystal Palace buffet makes it easy for everyone to leave feeling full, of course, you don't have to eat until your pants are bursting at the seams, but if you want to, you can. You might want to go if you want to eat in Magic Kingdom. If you're planning a full day in MK, maybe even from rope drop to fireworks, Crystal Palace is a good option to take a sit down, AC filled break during your day while simultaneously filling everyone's bellies so that no one's in desperate need of a snack during the fireworks. And you might want to go if you just love buffets. This is an easy one. You like eating at buffets? You probably enjoy Crystal Palace, plain and simple. But you might not want to go if you want super unique eats. Now, there are some unique offerings at the Crystal Palace Buffet, but it's not like Skipper Canteen levels of adventurous. You want more than your basic buffet? Then you best be choosing a different restaurant. You want character dining, maybe. Crystal Palace has paused character dining, and we don't yet know when it'll return, so you might want to choose a different spot like Cinderella's Royal Table or even Be Our Guest, where the Beast sometimes pops in, to satisfy those meet and greet experiences. Or if those are filled up, look for those meet and greets outside of the parks too, like at Chef Mickey's, Topolino's Terrace, Storybook Dining. That's what that one's my favorite, Storybook Dining at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. And remember, you don't have to be staying at a certain hotel to eat there. As long as you have a reservation to dine, anyone is welcome. Welcome. You might not want to go to Crystal Palace if you don't want to pay for a pricey buffet. This isn't the most expensive Disney World restaurant on property, but it's also not the cheapest. If you're trying to keep your budget as low as possible, you may want to Ariana Grande this dining experience and say thank you next. Also, if you're a little weirded out by buffets in general right now during the pandemic, totally understand. And that might make you say nah to this one as well. Another reason you don't want to go to Crystal Palace, you want breakfast. Although CP used to serve breakfast, it's not an option right now. And if the lunch and dinner options don't appeal to you or you want to fill up on one of those less expensive breakfasts, because we always recommend filling up on a table service breakfast, which is going to cost less and fill you up, and then you can just snack through the rest of the day, then this one's not going to work for you. By the way, a couple more options for breakfast in the Magic Kingdom, that cinnamon roll over at Gaston's Tavern or Cheshire Cattail Pastry at Cheshire Cafe. And you might also find the Plaza serving breakfast, which is pretty good too. So the Crystal Palace will usually treat you pretty well, aside from the occasional bleh item we stumble on and the fact that it's a buffet, which some people just don't like buffets. 
But we do miss the presence of those 100 acre wood friends. Some of us do. Some of us here at DFB aren't the biggest meet and greet fans, but it just goes to show you everyone's got different preferences. We'll continue to keep you updated on any future changes that the Crystal Palace experiences, which I bet they will experience a lot. And we definitely have a feeling they aren't settled into their ways just yet. Let us know in the comments what you think about the Crystal Palace. We'd love to have you help the rest of our viewers with your experiences. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.